world changed from making yourself better to help others better. We are moving from IT to DT. So if we are not innovative, if we're not creative enough, it, it will be very difficult to survive in this century. Everybody have to think about the future. Everybody have to think about the future different from yesterday. Think about something that, you, how can you do different? How can you do things right? How can you do things to help others do better rather than help yourself do better? Thanks very much. So I'm going to talk about the substantial opportunities associated with recovering energy from waste, but I first want to put it in context and have you think about the most pristine natural environment that you know. I guarantee you there's one thing missing, and that's waste. Why? Because in a natural environment, organisms have evolved to use anything that would be considered waste as a resource. In fact, they have to do this because any ecosystem that doesn't have that property is going to go extinct. So that brings me to our industrial system. I think we're all aware of the problems associated with fossil fuels and carbon dioxide pollution, but you may be less aware that we're doing this with literally every single other element we're using, whether it's carbon, phosphorus, nitrogen, metals, et cetera. And this raises, I think, a really important question. Can we take a page out of nature's book and use what's considered waste as a resource? Now, obviously, we're doing this to some extent in certain industries. In heavy metals, for example, copper, about 30% of worldwide production is actually from scrap. And in post-consumer plastics and, and uh, metals, we're doing okay. But this is only limited and doesn't, doesn't enable a complete solution. A true solution would go further. And to use a phrase that was popularized in Marriott's magazine, Scientific American, in the late 1980s, it would create a true industrial ecology, a system in which all of the industrial outputs were actually inputs <coughs> to other systems. Now, this would create environmental benefits. But the thing I think that a lot of people don't realize is there will also be substantial financial benefits, particularly in the, in the area of waste energy. And I want to give you an example. So think about the beer that you had last night, or the four beers you had last night. <laughs> There's certainly a number of ingredients to that. There's water is one of the main ingredients, uh, wheat or grains, and packaging. There's a number of others, but those are really the main ones. So that produced the beer, which is good. But in our current industrial paradigm, it also produced a lot of waste products. It produced a substantial amount of wastewater, five times the amount of beer as, uh, as the amount of beer. It produced spent grain, spent yeast and also a substantial amount of packaging waste. Now, currently, these are disposed of rather unsustainably, but the irony is that we've known for a long time that they've got energy in the carbon bonds that hold them together. They contain a lot of organics. We've known for some time that there are uh, microbes called methanogens that have the ability to release methane, which is a kind of renewable fuel, while degrading organics. Our firm, Cambrian Innovation, is supercharging these microbes with newly discovered electrically active bugs that can, develop, that can produce higher quality methane as well as electricity and hydrogen. So that means that that waste is actually fuel. Let me give you a couple of examples. Take the packaging waste. Went to the landfill. It turns out 50% of landfill waste is actually organic material. If you use methanogens, which are naturally occurring to some extent, cap the landfills and use the energy, you could generate up to 5% of worldwide energy demand We've capped every single landfill. <coughs> the spent grain is similar. It's actually a valuable product. Increasingly, we're using it as cattle feed in, in the food and beverage industry. But there's also other things you can do with it. You can put it in these things called anaerobic digesters to generate yet more methane that can be returned for energy. And the, the opportunities here are actually much more substantial than people realize, particularly in the developing world, as well as in the United States. Now, the wastewater is a little bit more tricky. Up until now, wastewater has been treated using what are called aerobic systems, and it's actually exceedingly energy intensive. Up to 3% of US energy demand is consumed in aerobic processes. But like the other outputs, wastewater actually contains organics, a lot of it, which itself contains a lot of energy. Cambrian Innovation has developed a system that can tap this energy in the wastewater, producing 80 to 90% pure renewable methane gas, while also producing clean water. So this is a substantial win for a brewery or for any food and beverage company that's looking to cut its carbon footprint and cut its water footprint. So now if we take a step back and we look at this on the whole, what's the impact on the brewery? Well, for one, as I said, we've cut their carbon footprint significantly. If you take into account the entire supply chain, we've done the equivalent of planting thousands of acres of trees. Now, how much does that cost them? Actually, it saved them a substantial amount of money. 
up to 25% return on investment just from the clean energy uh, that we're producing. So the question, obvious question is, why isn't this kind of thing done more broadly? Well, for one, up until now, we haven't had the solutions to do it. Existing technologies for tapping waste resources have been fairly inefficient to date, but this is changing particularly in the area of biotechnology. Now, there's another related problem, which is that we haven't had the incentives to create these kinds of solutions. There's an enormous amount of inertia in the form of capital and knowledge in the current industrial system and the current linear approach to dealing with natural resources. And what that does is it makes any conversation about limiting pollution turn into a battle between economics and the environment. So there is going to be some kind of switching cost for moving towards a more cyclical system. But I think if we take a step back, we need to think about what kind of system are we looking to create. And if you think about the industrial world as having a lot of infrastructure, I think we all know there's a lot of infrastructure yet to be built across the emerging world. And that gives us an opportunity, a substantial opportunity. So in closing, what I'd like to say is we're sitting on a substantial resource in the form of waste that we can think of new systems to leverage this. Technologies are out there to tap it, and all it takes is a little bit of imagination and vision. So my question to all of you is, what can we do to practically enable a real industrial ecology?